coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. In marriage, there are rejected differences, there are tolerated differences, and there are celebrated differences. The healing takes place when you start celebrating your differences. You don't think how opposite you are until you're actually living together and yeah. day-to-day you know, routines start bringing out that friction of just different personalities. But I know for myself, because you were more dominant and more strong in your personality, um, I couldn't win the battle of trying to change you. And so I began to ask the Lord to change me. Research has proven that most of the dating that we do in choosing a spouse is a very, it's done on the subconscious. And a good analogy is an iceberg. You see an iceberg and the tip is sticking out of the water, but the mass is below the water. When we're dating, we're looking at a person typically at a very, on a very superficial level. But God is doing something so much more under the surface that we don't even know about. And it's the not knowing that creates the danger. It's not understanding what God is doing when we're choosing a spouse that really creates the danger uh, in when we marry and a lot of the pain that is caused in marriage. So I wanna talk about two sovereign and subconscious choices that we make when we're choosing a spouse. When when Karen and I were dating, I, I was dating her. I didn't know there was anything deeper than just going out and having fun. But God wires us to choose a spouse according to his will. God wires us to choose a spouse in a certain way. And there's something way deeper going on when we're dating. And and then the person we marry, there's something much more sovereign than we think there is in who we marry. And so there's two choices that we make when we're dating and get married that we need to understand. The first is when we're dating and marry, we're trying to find a person to be our compatible opposite. Okay. Now, a lot of people would say, no, when I marry, I'm looking for someone that's like me. No, you're not. In, in a, on a conscious level, you may think that you're looking for a person that's like you. God wired you to find your opposite. This is what Genesis 2.18 says. The Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. The word helper is the word aidser. It means to supply what is lacking. God didn't create another Adam because Adam didn't need another him. He needed someone to supply what was lacking. Marriage is not this. Marriage is this. You don't need another you. The last thing in the world you need is another you. You need someone who supplies what's lacking. And so God created Eve to complement Adam. And so when we're getting married, consciously we're thinking, I'm gonna find someone that's just like me. I just, you know, because I'm normal, I wanna find another normal person just like me. I don't, know, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but you're basically incompatible with yourself. You know, you're looking for somebody compatible. We're looking for someone to complete us. Compatibility is not based on sameness. Compatibility is based on beliefs, values, and character. What makes Karen and I compatible is not that we're the same because we're polar opposites. What makes Karen and I compatible is we love Jesus, we're going to the same place in life and we both agree that the character of Christ is what we're after. You want a person that you share beliefs with, that you share life goals with and values, and that you believe in their character. The the purpose of dating is not to see how good a person is in bed. The purpose of dating is to see a person's character so you can spend your life with them safely. That's the the purpose of dating. So if we have the same beliefs and values in character, we're compatible, but we're gonna be very, very different. And it's not understanding that that causes so much of the problem. Remember, Adam rejected Eve. As soon as they fell, Adam rejected Eve and said to God, that woman that you gave me, she's, she's the problem. Ever since she showed up, there's been nothing but problems. And he was not accusing Eve, he was accusing God of not giving him the right woman, even though he did. Eve was created perfectly. Karen and I are, are so different. We're such a, a good example of this point now, I've written a new book. Harper Collins is the publisher, and my co-author is Alan Kelsey. And our book is called Strengths-Based Marriage. 
And um, the Strength Finders, for those of you who are in business, Strength Finders is the number one business book uh, in the world. 12 million people have taken the Clifton Strength Finders assessment. And the Clifton Strength Finders, there are 34 strengths. Uh, and we all have certain strengths and weaknesses. Uh, but there are 34 strengths. These are really, really brilliantly done. My number one strength is called achiever. An achiever just means get it done. I wake up in the morning, I'm gonna get it done. I'm an achiever. My number 34 strength is empathy. Empathy means just feeling, feeling other people's pain and being in touch with the emotions around you. Okay, so I'm number one achiever, number 34 empathy. Karen is number one empathy and number 34 achiever. We are exact opposites. Alan, Alan said, I don't know that I've ever tested two people who are more opposite than you and Karen. You're opposite. I've, I've known it for many years. You're opposite. So, so I'm an achiever. I wake up, I get it done. Karen is empathy. She feels. Karen lives in a feeling. She's very healthy, by the way. I'm not talking, this isn't a bad thing, it's a good thing. But Karen feels, okay? I don't feel. I mean, I guess I feel things, you know, but, but an example of how I don't feel is sometimes I'll have a toothache. Um, and my teeth start hurting. Well, when my teeth start hurting, I know I have a headache. And so when my teeth start hurting, I'll think to myself, I better have a headache. And I'll think about it for a minute or two, and I realize I have a terrible headache, and I've had it for several days. And people say, and people say well, you just don't feel headaches? I don't feel like other people. I just don't. Why? I don't know. I just don't feel. But my wife feels for me. She, she lives in a constant feeling. When I'm talking to Karen on the phone when she's in the car, I'm getting a rundown on everybody in her life that she's passing. <laughs> Every bump in the road, all the traffic, all the people who pull in front of her. And sometimes when we're talking on the phone when she's driving, I just have to say, focus, focus. I just want to talk about what we're having for supper. I don't want to hear about everybody on the road. Okay. <laughs> we were eating dinner one night. We were eating at a restaurant, and we had a bad waitress. She was just a bad waitress. And uh, she's slow, we couldn't find her, she got the order wrong, all that kind of stuff. And so I realized about halfway through dinner that Karen was focused on that waitress. And I knew what was about to happen. I've lived with a sister many years. I knew it was about to happen. <laughs> and I said, leave it alone. And she said, no, there's something wrong with that waitress. I'm gonna find out what it is. I said, leave it alone. We're, we're gonna eat and go. <laughs> we're not here to fix anybody tonight. Okay, we're just gonna eat and leave, okay. And we will feel like we've achieved something. <laughs> it wasn't two seconds that waitress was over and Karen had all of her personal history and ministered to her. And it, it, you know, and, and when it was over, I just thought, well, that was real touching. You know, that was just, that was great. But, it, but her emotions make me nervous. <laughs> to this day, they just make me nervous, you know, because I just don't feel, but so we're different. We're different. Well, here's what happened. Early in our marriage, I would just say, you're weird. What's wrong with you? You feel too much. You don't, you're not supposed to feel everything. You know? And I would just shame her, and, and she did the same with me. We just sit, rejected each other. And when we were hurting each other, that's what we did. And then as our marriage matured, I remember the, the conversation that we had one day, and Karen said to me, she said, uh, Jimmy, I am sorry. I am so sorry for how I feel. I know it bothers you. I know that you, you think that I feel too much. And I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try not to, I'm sorry. And, and here's what I said to Karen, and I meant it from the bottom of my heart. Karen, I'm, I need someone like you in my life. Please don't stop feeling. See, in marriage, there are rejected differences, there are tolerated differences, and there are celebrated differences. The healing takes place when you start celebrating your differences. Karen and I are a great team. We, we really are a great team. As a family unit, what I do really well, Karen doesn't care much about. What Karen does really well, I don't care that much about. We do some things together, obviously, and we enjoy being together, but we make such a good team. See, a good team is not made up of people who do the same things. There's only one quarterback. You know, there's, there's only one person who plays each position, but you have to have all the positions to make a team. 
I don't need someone like me. I need someone different. But the problem is we're looking for someone who is our compatible opposite when we're dating. As soon as we get them, we begin to shame them and reject them because they're not like us. Because we don't understand what God is doing. God is putting us together with an azer. If you're married, your spouse is your azer. They're supplying what is lacking. In my case, emotions. Karen is supplying in my life what's lacking. So when Karen feels, after 43 years of marriage, when Karen feels today, I don't shame her, reject her, I listen to it. In fact, I go to Karen sometimes and say, Let me, tell me how I'm feeling. And <laughs> I don't know. I'll say, how am I feeling about this? And Karen will say, well, you're feeling this. I'll think, really? Yeah. Think about it for a little while. I think that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> She's an expert feeder. She's just a great feeder. Jimmy Evans, you want to get it done? I'm your guy. I'm an achiever. I'm going to get it done. I'll kill some people in the meanwhile, but I'll get it done. <laughs> Thank God for Karen. She's kept me out of so much trouble. You are wired to find your opposite. Celebrate it. Don't reject it. Celebrate it. God's going to give you an azer. You want to be compatible? You want to be compatible in Christ? You want to have the same character and values but someone different? Here's the second subconscious decision and sovereign decision that we're making. To find a committed partner to walk me back through my past so I can heal. Now, many people, including myself, would say when they're getting married, I want to find a person to take me as far from my past as I can possibly get. It is exactly the opposite. I believe it's why I married Karen. I believe it's why she married me. We fought each other. We did not have an understanding of that, though, and we wounded each other. We wounded each other, and we wounded each other until we began to heal each other. You say, well, Jimmy, what changed that you began to heal each other? Number one, we had to both admit that we were wounded. I was very macho, and I was extremely damaged, but I put on this tough exterior. And every time that Karen would get close to my wounds, which I had many, I would reject her and act tough. Now, Karen, Karen advertised her pain. She had low self-esteem, and everybody knew it. She was devastated. And so, but Karen was the first one that came to me. She was more humble than me, and she more honest than me. And Karen said, I'm damaged. I'm damaged, Jimmy. And I, I thought, well, Finally, you're getting it. You know, you're the problem. Yeah, well, she was more godly than me, more humble than me. But then the Lord broke through my heart, and I stopped the, the lie. And I told Karen, I'm damaged, Karen. And it's the fear of you seeing this that motivates a lot of my fights. I don't, I don't want you to see how messed up I really am. But obviously, she could see it. We stop blaming each other and attacking each other. If you're going to heal each other, you have to stop attacking each other. And this is what Karen did that was so wise. She just sat down one day and said, God, heal me. Wasn't about Jimmy. God, heal me. She put the focus on herself. We both turned to God. But another thing that we began to do that was very important is we allowed each other to complain without being attacked. And I said to Karen and she said to me, I'm your safe place. I'm not going to judge you and attack you when you say stuff. And if there's something that you're feeling, if there's something that's going on, I want you to tell me and I won't attack you. And so we're going to talk it out, but I'm not going to attack you. So we became a safe place for each other to come and share and we healed each other. And let me say this, women were given the name in Genesis 2 of the Holy Spirit, helper. Jesus said, when I leave, I'm going to send another helper, Azer. It's the, that's Azer's the Hebrew, but in the New Testament, it's the same thing. He's going to supply what's lacking. He's going to give you the power to accomplish a task and to supply what's lacking. Women are made in the image of the Holy Spirit. And guess what? The Holy Spirit's a healer. How did Karen heal me? She, well, first of all, she helped me find my emotions. Karen helped me to walk back through my past. I, I'm not wired to feel. And so... We would have conversations. It was talking to Karen that healed me because we would have conversations about my past and I would say something and Karen would say, Jimmy, this is, this is what happened and this is how you're feeling about that. She was always right. Gently, spirit of truth, that's what Karen is, just like the Holy Spirit. She healed me. She was my safe place to talk and she believed in me. She, she always believed in me. She always spoke you know, honor to me. Honor heals men. Many men, our deepest wounds are caused by disrespect and lack of honor. 
And so her honor healed me. How did I heal Karen? I gave her strength and confidence when she was unsure of herself. I have confidence. I gave her confidence when, when she lacked it. I committed myself to nourish and cherish her and to put her first in my life. And so I created an environment of security when I cherished Karen and put her first. You were designed to heal each other. Now, let, me, let me say one thing and I'm done. There's a movie called Groundhog's Day, Bill, Bill Murray. And in this movie, he's a rotten guy. He's a weatherman, and he's at this place doing a report on Groundhog's Day, and he's just a rotten guy, immoral, just a crummy, rotten guy. And he wakes up the next morning, and it's the same day. It's still Groundhog's Day. And he's trying to get this girl. Andy McDowell plays the character of the woman. He's trying to get this girl, and he's a rotten guy. And he wakes up the same day. He's still rotten. And he wakes up the next day. He's still rotten. Day after day, he wakes up. And it's still Groundhog's Day, over and over, and he's a rotten guy. And finally, he gets the message that he needs to improve as a human being. And so he begins to be kind and thoughtful and moral, and he begins to improve himself. And finally, at the end of the movie, he's just a wonderful human being, and he wakes up and it's a new day. If you keep rejecting each other and attacking each other, you're gonna keep living the same day for the rest of your life. You're not gonna wake up in a new day in your marriage until you understand this. You married your opposite, celebrate it. Well, this comes from, the teaching that you heard there comes from the series that I do called Emotionally Healthy Marriage. And the whole purpose of it is to help people to grow emotionally because your marriage is never gonna be better than your level of emotional health. And Karen and I got married and we were very unhealthy. But you know, the Lord heals people. You know, we're testimony to the fact that the Lord heals people. He can heal you. And maybe it's you, maybe it's a, a son or daughter or someone that you know and love. Uh, you may be a leader in church and you wanna use this information there. Wherever you wanna use it, we want to get this information into your hands. And right now, when you support marriage today, we're a mission and a ministry. We go all over the world helping people in marriage. When you help us right now with your gift of any amount, and Karen and I want to ask you to really give your most sacrificial gift. We want to send you, just as a thank you, the Emotionally Healthy Marriage five-part CD series, all the teachings plus what you heard today, for your gift of $55 or more. We want to send you the CD series and my 21-day Inner Healing Journey app. Thousands of people have been through this app. It may take you 10 days. It may take you three months but it, inner, it goes into the inner healing into our lives that's so necessary for God to work on a deeper level, again, so that we can be emotionally healthy people and spouses and live in a healthy marriage. And for your gift of $110 or more, we wanna send you the five-part DVD series plus the 21-day inner healing app. And let me say this, that inner healing app would be a fantastic thing to do as a couple and just let God work on your marriage together. But we wanna get these resources into your hands to help you, to help your marriage, to help your family, and here's how you can get it. Regardless of how unhealthy or broken your marriage may seem today, you can have an emotionally healthy marriage. Support Marriage Today with your best online gift of any amount, and we'll send you Jimmy Evans' five-part teaching, Emotionally Healthy Marriage, in this powerful series, Jimmy shares practical, easy-to-follow disciplines to renew your marriage. Receive the five-part CD series and the 21-Day Inner Healing Journey app for your gift of $55 or more. The 21-Day Inner Healing Journey will guide you step-by-step -step through 21 daily plans, including personal application exercises, daily videos, and much more. For your gift of $110 or more, you'll receive the five-part DVD series along with the 21-Day Inner Healing Journey app. In a matter of days or weeks, you can have a new marriage simply by changing the patterns, the disciplines and traditions in your marriage so that you have and maintain a healthy marriage for the rest of your life. Experience emotionally healthy marriage today. Well, we hope that you're enjoying this program today. We're talking now about the emotionally healthy marriage. That's what this series is. But this program is talking about the healing journey of marriage. And Karen, I have a question from one of our viewers okay. for you. And this says, Karen, my husband and I are so opposite. We mostly hurt and reject each other. How can we be more accepting 
and control our emotions. That goes to today's program, you know, mm-hmm. compatible opposites. So what do you say about that? Well, I know that for you and I, what I, what happened in our marriage is exactly the same thing. You know, um, you don't think how opposite you are until you're actually living together and yeah. day-to-day, you know, routines. You start bringing out that friction of just different personalities. But I know for myself, because you were more dominant and more strong in your personality, um, I couldn't win the battle of trying to change you and so I began to ask the Lord to change me. And so in this circumstance, I would say, you know, the woman probably needs just to, you know, find a way of accepting who her husband is at this moment and find, go to the Lord and just ha- have him help change her first. Yeah. Because I can promise you it's, they're both messed up, you know, because you and I were both messed Absolutely. up. Absolutely. And so. You're pushing each other's buttons. Yeah. And so it's, you know, easy just to. Take the focus off your husband and all his faults and the things that frustrate you and um, begin just to go to the Lord and just ask the Lord to show you your heart and what he wants to do for you, you know, and how much he wants to heal you. Because the Lord loves you more than you can even imagine. And he's the one that created you. So he's the perfect person to go to first to get the healing that you need uh, so that you can be healthy for your husband. Well, I, I had a couple the other day, just just like this couple. Mm-hmm. They, they had been fighting for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. They had been in a 20-year fight. Mm-hmm. And, That's uh, miserable. <laughs> it, well, yeah, and, and what happened was, in the counseling, she said, this goes back to the healing journey of marriage. Exactly the question here. He grew up with a mother who was domineering. Mm-hmm. And she grew up with a father who was uh, withdrawn and reclusive. Mm-hmm. So the, she had a fear of abandonment and she, she wanted, she feared that her husband was going to become like her father and he did. Mm -hmm. Well, but the problem was every time he withdrew, it made her fearful Mm -hmm. and she became more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Well, that reminded him of his domineering mother. He had come out of a home with a domineering mother. And so literally in the home, she wore his mother's mask mm-hmm. and he wore her father's mask. And so this his mother would rise up and begin to aggressively pursue him. In other words, it was his wife, but to him, it was the wound of his past mm-hmm. from his domineering mother. So he would withdraw, which reminded her of the wound of her past. Yeah. So it was just... Th- th- well, you and I went through this. And, exactly. And the worst part, though, is we were so immature and we didn't have all these teachings. And so right. we would say, you'd say, you're just like your mother. And I'd say, well, you're just like your father. <laughs> and it's just like, so there's that, that... Well, you were just like your mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, though... We marry someone who reminds us of the unfinished business of our past yeah. so we can heal each other. But here, here's one. I did. I was like my dad. I was just like my dad. <laughs> but, but here's the point. You can, it's the dance. You're in the fear dance and you're in the pain dance, but you keep making the same moves. You don't get out until you change mm-hmm. your move. Yeah. And the point is this. Why, why does my spouse respond to me like this? And, and I, this is what I said to this couple in counseling. Take the mask off. Mm-hmm. And I said to the wife, take his mother's mask off your face and stop being dominant. That's not what he needs. I said to him, take her father's mask off your face. Mm-hmm. Stop being her father. Well, it's like what you said in the teaching. It's a judgment. You yeah. know, they begin, they judge each other and, yeah. you know, you're just like your father. You're just like your and they It's were. a judgment. And they were. Mm-hmm. And so, but, but you can't get healed. You can't get set free from a judgment. That's right. And, but they were, they were both playing the role that drove each other crazy. Mm-hmm. He withdrew. She became aggressive. He withdrew. She became more aggressive. Mm-hmm. And so what I said to him is, heal her. And he said, how do I do that? I said, pursue her. Mm -hmm. Stop withdrawing. The withdrawal is how she got hurt. She's not going to get healed until a man loves her. Mm -hmm. She's looking for the love of a man. And I said to her, stop belittling him Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, emasculating him. Well, how am I doing that? By being aggressive. He doesn't need that. He needs respect. So the point being, Karen, you healed me. Mm -hmm. You know, I healed you. I mean, Mm -hmm. God used us to heal each other when we got out of that pain dance Mm -hmm. And we got got into the you know the healing journey of marriage, and that's what the program is about today. That's good. Okay, well, we're out of time, but let me just say uh, thank you for joining us, and we we do hope that your marriage becomes a healing journey. Some of you are divorced, some of you may be single, and you may be very discouraged about being married. I want to tell you that marriage works beautifully when you do it God's way, and God will put you with someone who's your compatible opposite because you need each other. But also, God's going to draw you to someone who will help to heal you from your past. So maybe this program will help you. We want you to get the resources from today because the full five-part series on emotionally healthy marriage, we're making it available on CD 
and DVD along with the 21 Day Inner Healing Journey app. So a lot of ministries available. Also, thank you for being our partners. If you're not a partner, we want you to join us and be a monthly partner. The, our partners are precious. They're so important to the ministry. And here's how you can become a partner right now. God bless you. We all enter into marriage confident a happy, fulfilling life is in front of us. Over time, life's journeys can quickly deflate those expectations and we're left feeling like we've fallen out of love. But with the right information and a mutual commitment to success, a better marriage is possible. Become a rock-solid partner and gain instant access to practical marriage help in topics ranging from communication, needs, and intimacy, as well as blended families, intentional dating, spiritual health, and much more. Marriage Today exists to help every person succeed in marriage. With your help, we can continue raising a standard for marriage and reverse the curse of family breakup in order to rebuild the nations one home at a time. That's why we're tied into the ministry. We want to be able to bless and give so they can keep doing what they're doing. There's just millions of marriages that need help, and if this is a way we can help facilitate that, then that's a great way to spend some money. We love Jimmy and Karen, and we love learning more about how uh, to be a better couple and how to help other couples like they do. Become a rock-solid partner with the ministry and mission of Marriage Today. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Subscribe to Marriage Today's YouTube channel for more marriage building videos and updates.